Hey gamers, today we're gonna look at Coimbra. Let's check it out. Okay, there's a lot going on with setup here, but bear with me, it's not that hard. What you're gonna do is first off, each player is gonna get their own little player board. They're gonna get these little cube trackers. They're gonna get, start off with seven guards, which are these shields here, and seven coin right here. So they would actually put the little markers uh, whoop, there and there. Now they're also gonna start off with three little castle pieces that where they're gonna fit their die in. They're gonna get a bag of these little uh, tokens here. They're gonna be placing on the board. In fact, they're gonna place one of them in each one of these tracker rolls here and moving up the board there, this'll be how they do it with each one of those trackers there. They're gonna have, you're gonna shuffle, these are tokens, you'll shuffle them up so that they, it'll always be different each game and it'll tell you what happens, who gets first place, second place, and third place on each track. So again, this leads to lots of different ways, uh, lots of different circumstances when setting up the game. You can have different scenarios ending up there. Same thing with city placement. You're gonna have your little traveler here you're going to place them in the castle at first. Eventually, you're going to pick where you're going to start off on. But then you have these number three tokens, number two tokens, and number one tokens. And you're going to shuffle them up. There's extra in the game. So again, the game will never be the same as you're placing out uh, these little travel tokens. Uh, the icons, uh, there'll be icons on each one that the book will tell you what each one means. And after playing a few rounds, you will get used to it. You're also going to shuffle a bunch of mission cards. Uh, they look like this. There's several more that comes with the game. And then you're going to place them out just randomly across the board there. Also, you're going to place out your uh, castle tokens here with this little piece here. And then three rows of four cards each. And you're randomly going to shuffle them from the number two deck. You see you have a number one, number two, and a number three deck. And the for re reason for that being is, at the start of the game, what you're going to do is you're going to shuffle these one cards and then sh put them out and groups of two and then picking the player order that person picks one of these cards they want to start off with now when you pick some of these cards let me show you how it works here first off you'll go up on that respective track so here for gray i would move up one on the gray track here i get to move up two on the green track so i move up there secondly if it has the little lightning on it that means I instantly get whatever this is, which is one coin. So I'd give myself one coin, and there's a little put place on the board where you would put all of your little lightning people right there. Um, this person has the emblem of the letter C, which means during the C stage, I can use her. So I'm going to put her right down here where it says C. And there's places on the board, this is for E, this is for the exclamation point, which means it's in-game scoring. So they even tell you where to place your cards right there on your player board, which I find super neat. Now, uh, one last thing that you're going to do for the game setup, you got this cool little player marker. It's a little lion, and you're going to put him right there on the zero. And then you're ready to play. Oh, you're also putting out these crown tokens, I should say. Uh, crown tokens, all you have to do is look and see where the, you're going vertically, where the first orange is. So this was orange, so I put the orange there. The first green was here, so I put the green here. That's green, that's green, that's gray. So I put the first gray there gray, orange, already have an orange, so it's right there, and then purple. This is the first purple, so that got this crown. And that's how you're gonna set up the game. Now, after everyone's picked their cards, then going in reverse order, whoever picked their cards last, gets to decide which point in the castle do they want to start their traveler off of. No two travels, travelers can start off in the same point here. So maybe I picked right here, because that's where I want to start off. And then the player who went third, second to last would pick next, and then the player who picked first on the card round would pick last on the travel round there. Now, the game is super easy to play. Play. Even though it looks really busy, it's super easy to play, and it's all told here on your game board what you're going to do. A, B, C, D, E, F, and then in-game scoring. This is so cool. All right, first off, A, roll the die. All right, so you have a bunch of die in the game, and you're going to roll all these die. 
And so let's say I just rolled them all out. Good. All right. Now they're all rolled out. And now I am moving on to B. B means I'm going to select some of these dice that have been rolled here and using my little uh, dice holders. So I have three dice holders here and I would just pick a dice. So let me see. I'm going to pick this number two here. So I'd put it right here in my little castle here and I can place it on any one of these four rows and so I place it here well let's say blue player goes next and they picked a four a green four and let's say he wanted to go here well he would actually go first now uh, when picking these because he has the higher number and then let's say red did theirs and red said you know I'm gonna pick a two as well and I'm gonna go to the same spot now because I picked two first red player has to go behind me so if I play two two uh, the whatever someone picks the same pip number as you they would actually go behind you if you if they weren't the first one to place one there and as you can see right there at the bottom we can tell who whose turn it will be and you can have multiple die here so maybe <laughs> yellow player wants to pick up that whatever the last card is because maybe he thinks they're all good and he can't lose so it would go blue yellow red yellow when we get to the next round now the exact opposite is true if you play on the top board whoever plays the lowest die so for instance one I would definitely go first if anyone else were to pick a one then they would go second and of course if anyone picked something that was super high like a three there they would go down there and once you're going to do once you're done uh, everyone's selecting their die and they're all on the board then you're going to go to round C and round C is actually starting all these purchases here now of course you also don't want to forget any cards you have with C which means ooh, if they need coin I'm going to pay one less coin on them mm, I got to keep that in mind and of course this would be on your player board like that so you wouldn't forget it anyway so as when you're in C round you solve each auction uh, well each purchase I guess from top to bottom now the top one as I said starts with the one and by the way whatever your pip number is that is what you're paying so this person's paying for either coin or shield determining what's on their card so for instance let me just grab these two here you can see this person wants coin where this person wants guards and that means that's how much you'd have to pay so for instance if it's here and he the green the blue player wanted that one they would have to pay four coins however maybe if they were down here and they wanted to buy this one they would have to pay four shields so that's kind of how that works down there all right so as we start off at the first part they're going to get one of these castles now let me show you what each castle does it's very simple a little lightning bolt says I can use it immediately I need to get seven shield or seven coin Ooh, that's nice or I can get this one which gives me two victory points and lets me move three spaces on the board so maybe if I got this I would move up two victory points and then go one two and land in this place here I place my little token right there on top of it and I could get that reward which is one coin one shield and two victory points now just because I place my token there doesn't mean another player can come along and place their token there as well you can have as many people visit that city and put their tokens there and gain that same reward it's not the first one there gets it and no one else gets it it's just whoever placed one there now obviously I can't go here again and grab the reward again since I've already been there but if I wanted to pick up that one that's definitely something I would do now I'd hold on to these uh, regardless in the game because the crowns are going to come in handy in the next round so the next one here gives you four victory points and it lets you get this little dice ring that you can put on top of a die now what this is this is really cool uh, you have three little extra pips here so for instance man I'm going second I wanted to go first here what I do is I just add this to my die goes on there so this two is actually a five now five will jump them and now I am picking first but I'm only gonna pay two of whatever resource you know shields or coin uh, that's a really neat thing in the game so I really thought that was pretty cool and then of course the last one what it says here is you can immediately skip to F and buy or purchase one of these investments for minus two of the cost so and when we get to F I'll tell you what this is about but if I had this token I would use it and pay minus two of whatever the cost 
of that card says. So for instance, this card is a seven. It's underneath the coin here. Uh, I would, if I had this token, I would only pay five coins to put my little player token there. All right, if I wanted to bit purchase that one a little bit earlier. And then of course I would keep this because the crowns would be important. After that, we go down the list here where everyone would select uh, or buy some cards, either using crowns or coins from their player board. Now, there are other things in this game, emblems, as you see here, this one was C, so in the C phase, if I've ever been playing coin, I'm gonna get minus one coin. But anyway, this one, immediately, lightning bolt says I can immediately go three spaces. Or E, that means during the E phase, I can take advantage of this, whatever orange die I had, which I didn't have any, but if I was red player and red player got that, they would actually get two coins for each orange die they have in their castle holder, and that's in the E phase. And then you have things like exclamation point, I already told you, that is stuff that you would put on your player board right here, and that would count for in-game scoring. So for this it means, hey, if you're on the seven, eight, and nine of the purple track, by the end of the game, you get five points. If you're on the 10, 11, 12, you get seven points. If you're on the 13, 14, 15, we'll give you 10 extra victory points. It's in-game scoring there. So that's kind of how you read each card. Now after you're done, whatever cards are not used are discarded, and you're gonna put out more cards from this deck. Once you run out of deck two, of course you will go to deck three. But anyway, after that, then we go to uh, phase D, which is we're gonna determine the new player order. And as you see, this is very er uh, easy to understand. Whoever has the maximum amount of crowns will go first. So if you see here on the board, they actually have the player order, and if you're going behind number one, you will automatically get a few crowns, but other ways you can get crowns, like I said, is picking castle pieces, which come with crowns, which is why you wanna hold on to them, or if you pick a card with this little crown token on it, you can just add that to your player board like that. I don't even know if that, this was necessary here, but I'm assuming that's what these were for, and that's pretty cool. I don't know if anyone's gonna get three different crowns, but it could happen. Anyway, you're gonna add up all your crowns. Whoever has the most crowns instantly, instantly, right now, becomes the first player. And they'll be the first player through these two rounds and all these three rounds until we get here again. So first player always changes in phase D. Next up is phase E. As you see, the little handout, gimme, gimme, gimme. Of course, phase E is where we could take advantage of any of our cars that say E. Let me show you a different E here. So for instance, this one. Oh, by the way, if we were to ever purchase this one, of course you would go up on that track X amount of spaces. So here I'd go up one on gray. If it was the last one I picked earlier, I would have gone up three on the gray track. But let's say I bought this one, I go up one gray. So now we're in the E phase, and the E phase says, hey, I can go up any one of these tracks. Which marker do I want to move up? Well, maybe I want to move up my purple marker a little bit and leave it at that. Then I grab one coin. So you would take advantage of any of the E phase cards that you have in your possession. Of course, there is a spot on your player board where to locate those. After that, you're going to do, it's one of the coolest thing, you're gonna take all your die, and let me get all my die here, and then you're gonna get the rewards on, that, on those tracks where the colors are. Pips don't matter, now only the color matters. So for instance, here I'm on green. Well green it says, ooh, I get three victory points. So I climb up and get three more victory points. Or here, purple, it says, hmm, I can travel two more spaces. So I was here, I will go one, two, and travel to this place. Ooh, set up another marker and probably get some more rewards. Now, this one here basically says, hey, every time you capture another city, one through three, you're gonna get a victory point. That was good, I should've got that one earlier. Uh, and again, again, the rule book will tell you what all these emblems mean. After you play it enough, you'll get it. Now, thirdly, I have the gray die, so that means I will get to add three more more shield to my markers here. So I left my markers out there, but let's say that it was seven and seven again. And then because I had a gray token, I would move up one, two, three on my shield. Of course, if these were oranges, I would get the coin indicated there, uh, but uh, you can only get basically three of different colors. Now, if you notice, there is a white die in the game. What this is, it's a wild card, which means if I would have gotten this one, I get to pick the track that I wanted to take advantage of. So maybe I wanted some more victory points or more coin or more shield or whatever. And of course, the higher you move up these tracks, the better the rewards are gonna be for the die you select. So at first it's the pips, and then when you get to phase E, it's the color that really matters. I really like that. After that, you finally go to phase F, which I talked about. 
Each player, beginning with the first player, may pick any one of these cards to invest in. These are all in-game scoring of stuff that you will get. And of course, just because one person invests in it doesn't mean another player can put their token there and they can invest in it as well. So after that is done, then what you're gonna do, like I said, clear the board, reset it. Everyone's gonna take their die and they're gonna put them back into the pool here. And then they're gonna reshuffle and start the round all over again. Now. After you are out of cards, when you're out of cards, we trigger in game. Then you're gonna add up all of your little victory points, anything with the exclamation point here. You're gonna look at the bales here and see the bales are these little tokens here and you're gonna see who's the highest on these tracks and award points out that way. You're also, there is a set collection game going on with these cards as well. Some of these cards have little diplomas on them and they are, they are different colors and if you can get all five different colors, you will get up to 12 victory points. So even the diploma is something that you could get on this game that would add up to end game points. Finally, what you would do is you add up any remaining shield or coin and then any crown you got that round, divide by two, and then add, get those victory points. So even though crown may not be that important on the final round, it is important in in-game scoring. And of course, whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. Final thoughts, what do I think about the game? Well, you know what? Uh, I've never uh, never got to play this game before I bought it. I just went ahead and bought it just based on what it looked like. Because what it looked like was a great game and a game that would fit me well. Uh, I got this game out, it, the artwork doesn't look that good, and at first it looks very, very confusing. For a while I had to sit down and read those instructions over and over again. But then everything clicked when you look at the player board and when you start to know all the icons, everything moves swiftly. I really, really, really enjoy this game. Now, as of this video, I haven't played it, but only a couple of times. And every time I'm playing it, I'm enjoying it more. I'm seeing more strategies. Man, those cards, it kind of reminds me of the game uh, Bruges, where the cards can be basically five different things. Well, these cards mean literally five different things that you can do with them. And you're always thinking, oh, do I need this? What cards you start off with or what cards you grab in the earlier rounds determine a strategy that you're probably going to implement going forward. So every time you play the game, it's going to be unique. Unique, and I love that. There's a lot of playability in this. Now, the only thing I do not like about it, and this is a good thing, I guess, the game goes too short. Oh man, I could definitely go another couple extra rounds playing this game. But I'll be honest, the game goes pretty quick. I haven't really timed our games, but I think they've all been under an hour. Because once you know how to play, uh, you can easily get this done th that quick. Uh, yeah, lovely game, wonderful game, well worth your time. All right, folks, that's it for now. Until next time, game on.